now we can produce this calcium sulfate hemihydrate in three ways so there are three methods one two three so depending on the method which we are following various types of gypsum product will get for example the first one is dry calcination dry calcination the second one is wet calcination wet calcination and the third one is the improved stone improved improved stone so in dry calcination we get let me change the color in dry calcination we get type 1 impression plaster type 1 impression plaster and we get type 2 dental plaster type 2 dental plaster and we'll see why do we get so and in wet calcination we get type 3 dental stone type 3 type 3 dental stone dental stone and here by this method improved stone we get dye stone dye stone okay now let's go one by one to each of these so first one is dry calcination dry calcination so in dry calcination as the name says dry we use an open kettle or vessel so let me draw a kettle here so we we using heat from below and we are having our gypsum here and this kettle is open as you can see so we are heating it at a temperature between 120 to 180 degrees centigrade and then the water is driven off and the dihydrate is converted into hemihydrate okay and this this type of calcination produces a hemihydrate which is called as beta hemihydrate beta beta hemihydrate okay so in dry calcination the crystals are not reorganized so for example if these were our crystals after calcination these would not get reorganized they are not reorganized So even though we are getting hemihydrate in the end, the initial shape of the calcium sulfate dihydrate still is present. Means our calcium sulfate dihydrate had this kind of crystals. Okay. And if in orange we are having hemihydrate, both these crystal form will look the same. Means so dihydrate converted into hemihydrate but still the crystal form remains the same so we still have the same rough irregular crystal form so these powders have apparently low density low density so these are the features of the beta hemihydrate so they have low density they have high surface area high surface area and they have poor packing ability poor packing ability and they also need to be mixed with large amount of water large amount of water needed okay so we studied four points about the beta hemihydrate these are the features of the beta hemihydrate that they have low density high surface area poor packing ability and large amount of water is needed and if i tell you they need around 50 ml of water for every 100 gram of powder all right now let's study now let's study about the wet calcination so we have the wet calcination okay so in wet calcination we heat in an autoclave so let me try and draw an autoclave here suppose if this is an autoclave okay 
and we have our gypsum product here all right so the dihydrate will get converted to hemihydrate here also but the hemihydrate that is produced it will consist of small regular particles so we have small regular particles which is prismatic particle prismatic particles will have here and these particles will be stronger and non porous it will be stronger and non porous non porous and this autoclave calcium sulfate it is known as alpha hemihydrate alpha hemihydrate in dry calcination we were getting beta hemihydrate in wet calcination we are getting alpha hemihydrate so another question for you why is this alpha hemihydrate stronger than the beta hemihydrate so here in uh, wet calcination sufficient water is present okay so it allow complete solution conversion so since water is present it allows complete solution conversion and recrystallization so complete solution will convert and undergo recrystallization crystallization so the new crystals that are formed they are prismatic they are stronger non porous and that is why alpha hemihydrate is stronger and we studied that by wet calcination we produce something which is the type 3 dental stone dental stone type 3 dental stone that is why we know those of you who have worked in clinic they know the dental stone is stronger than dental plaster all right now let's see some of the features of this alpha hemihydrate so these will have a higher apparent density higher density and they will have a uh, relative smaller they will have they will have a smaller relative surface area so surface area will be smaller surface area is smaller the beta hemihydrate had low density and the beta hemihydrate had high surface area this is just the opposite of that okay and since these have regular particles they can be packed well packed well okay and they require less water for mixing less water is required and they require around 30 ml water for 100 g of powder 100 g of powder and the beta hemihydrate we were needing 50 ml of water okay so these four are the features of the alpha hemihydrate now let's talk about the improved stone third one third one is the improved stone so if the dihydrate particles are heated about the same temperature but in the presence of 30% calcium or magnesium chloride 30% calcium or magnesium chloride magnesium chloride then the product becomes even denser now what we are getting the product will be denser denser than what we got before so these two chlorides the calcium and the magnesium chloride they act as deflocculants deflocculants d flocu lens so what they do they help to separate the individual particles that would otherwise tend to agglomerate so they don't allow the particles to stick to one another what they do they separate them all right So this third type of gypsum product is called as improved stone or dye stone. Improved or dye stone, and it is also called as modified alpha hemihydrate. It is also called as modified, modified alpha hemihydrate. Now let's talk about the setting reaction. Setting reaction. What happens when you mix? the gypsum product with water 
so we have this packet of gypsum so we have this packet of gypsum product okay and we have a bowl of water a bowl of water we mix them so we are actually mixing calcium sulfate hemihydrate calcium sulfate this is calcium sulfate hemihydrate and we are mixing it with water and we get calcium sulfate dihydrate calcium sulfate dihydrate all right plus we also get heat we'll see how much heat we are getting so this reaction is just the opposite of the manufacturing process when we were manufacturing we were producing calcium sulfate hemihydrate from dihydrate okay and here what we are doing we are producing calcium sulfate dihydrate by mixing the hemihydrate with water so the initial reaction which was the manufacturing process that was an endothermic reaction so when so when dihydrate was converting into hemihydrate hemihydrate it was an endothermic reaction endothermic reaction but now when the hemihydrate is converting to dihydrate by mixing it in water this reaction it is exothermic reaction exothermic reaction means heat is being released so the amount of heat given off is 3900 calories calories so here we have 3900 calories okay so this heat this heat which we are having here it has a clinical significance can you think of a clinical significance of this heat in your lab work so this is used while we are deflasking while we are flasking because this heat will soften the wax and enable it to be easily removed now let's have a look at some properties before we end this video and i shall inshallah continue this topic in the next video also so let's see some of the properties properties first one is the mixing time we'll see the mixing time then we'll see the working time wt then we'll see the setting time st and we'll see ways to change the setting time clinically so these are the properties we will be going through in this video so the mixing time it is defined as the time from the addition of powder to the water until the mixing is completed so it is usually completed in 20 to 30 seconds when we are mixing it by a machine and if you are doing hand spatulation it requires around at least a minute to obtain a smooth mix okay so this was the mixing time and then the working time so working time is measured from the start of mixing to the point where the consistency is no longer acceptable for the product's intended purpose so you started mixing and you note down the time and then till the product is no longer acceptable to be used like it has got stiffer stiffer that will be the working time so it is usually 3 to 5 minute we are not talking about the final stiffness we are talking about the stiffness um that that would not allow us to use it so generally it is 3 to 5 minutes 3 to 5 minute is the working time now the setting time is divided into initial and final setting time we have two setting time initial initial and final so initial setting time is the interval between the time the water and powder are mixed and the time that the mix can no longer be poured into mold or impression this is typically the working time we are talking about this is around 8 to 16 minutes 8 to 16 minutes we call it the initial setting time because it is the time when you can easily you know shift your poured impression to other areas without distorting it so this is the initial setting time 
and clinically if you have to know if it is set or not what you'll do you'll see the gloss so so clinically if you have to find out the initial setting time you see gloss and that gloss will be lost okay so there'll be loss of gloss if you find the gloss is absent that means the initial setting time has reached now why does loss of gloss occurs so let me show you if this is our poured impression okay and here we are having chemical reactions here we are having chemical reactions so what they'll do the gloss or the water which is present on the surface it will draw the water inside the water is drawn into the bulk of material and that is why the surface will lose the gloss okay so this is the so this is how we check the initial setting time clinically and the final setting time occurs when the major crystallization process is completed means the conversion of hemihydrate to dihydrate is essentially complete so the final setting time is 45 to 60 minutes so this is the time when the gypsum can be removed from its impression and you can easily just take it out without distorting it all right so in the next video we'll cover other properties and we'll also see the type of gypsum products if you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, share the video. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.